When um, Chip Murray and I were in Rwanda, we attended a meeting that occurs every Wednesday at Solus Ministries. And this is a gathering of survivors primarily women, many of whom have actually been raped during the time of the genocide in April and for the next hundred days in 1994. And the part that stood out in Chip's message is that he took a 5,000 franc note out of his pocket and he asked, how much is this worth? And of course everybody said it's worth 5,000 francs. He then crumpled it up and threw it on the ground and he stomped on this 5,000 franc note and then he picked it up and unrolled it and said, how much is this worth? And they said, of course, 5,000 francs. And the parallel was obvious, I think, to everyone in that audience because these were survivors who had been stomped on, who had lost family members, some of them had been gang raped, and yet the point was they still have the same value. For milk and honey. My soul longs to be there on the river they call the Nile. Every day is bright and sunny. You came by with nobody's money on the river they call the Nile. It's a garden.
And that propaganda was carried out on the radio. It was carried out by public officials. It was uh, something that actually did not just start the day of the genocide. There was a build-up for several years, and then it's very clear that the genocide itself was premeditated. Everywhere you go in Rwanda, which is a relatively small country, you see memorials such as this one. These are a constant reminder to what occurred. This is actually a memorial in a school in which the classrooms were emptied of chairs and instead planks were put in and thousands of bodies were placed on these boards with water poured over them to deal with the odor. And uh, it is actually one of the most haunting experiences that I have had to go into school classrooms in an area where about 50,000 people were killed and see this remnant of bodies. But also there was a church that uh, Chip and I visited in March uh, in which they decided rather than clean up that church, they would actually leave it the way they found it after the genocide. The pews are here, still now strewn with bodies. Um, actually, just the bones remain. And uh, the grenades that were thrown in to try to kill people in a massive way. The skeletons that have been collected. And actually, in some of the outbuildings, there are huge bags just filled with bones and skeletons. This is just a small number of them. The current ethnic makeup, which is not that different than what it was in 1994 at the time of the genocide, is roughly 84 percent, 50 percent Tutsi, and then the 1 percent Twa is what maybe a more popular way would be referred to as pygmies. Now, I'll very briefly say something about my own involvement. My uh, wife is Armenian and is the daughter of the survivor of the Armenian genocide, which happened in 1915. Now, I want you just to listen to this for a moment. Do you know that the moment is a special place I'm 
we stood at the mausoleum of the memorial centers as you saw in the pictures. I, I couldn't help my spine shivering from the pain. Thousands of bones, head bones, arm bones, and leg bones, thigh bones, bones everywhere. And you come away asking the question, can these bones live? Same question of Ezekiel and the body of dry bones. How do you call a positive out of a negative? Well, there are some very positive stories. I'd just like to share a few of them, and then from the floor, you can add whether positives or negatives. One is you saw winning the Nobel Pre Peace Prize, Mohammed Yunus. University of Southern California sponsored him here in April. The School of Business and several other organizations. It was a pleasure to meet Mohammed Yunus from the Grameen Bank. What they do is they take seventy-five dollars, a hundred dollars, a hundred fifty dollars. And they empower usually the woman of the household with her homemade goods. Because the ratio of places is 30 to 1. A dollar here is worth 30 there, or 40 or 50 dollars there. So what they were doing is specializing in home industry, micro credit. Just empower this industry maker, and she and her household then will be able to sustain their livelihood. It's a concept that could sweep the industrial and non industrialized nations of Africa and of China. As we can get pessimistic about the plight of the world, and we certainly don't want to get optimistic about the plight of the world, but neither to be pessimistic or optimistic, but to be optimistic together and do something about it. Rwanda has said to the world, we are eliminating capital punishment for any of those who participated in the genocide. And they are hoping that nations that have taken into custody or sheltered those who participated and even masterminded the genocide, they are hoping those nations will release those people, expatriate them to come back home. The president of Rwanda, President Paul Kagame, has said to the nation, we will speak no more of Hutus and Tutsis. Because we tried, I spoke with Don when we were in Rwanda. I, I asked, are you Hutu or Tutsi? And invariably, they said, we don't make that distinction, however they put it. They refused to even speak about it. Our divisions, we must put behind us our pain. Of course you never forget, but somehow you can forgive. And if we can somehow get the positives over the negatives, then we can find a way to accept the positive, eliminate the negative. Don't mess with Mr. in between. <laughs> to change human nature fundamentally. But I don't think that takes us off the hook 
of attempting to intervene in some fashion. I want to say two more things about our four, because I think this is the issue of the moment. Yes. Uh, between 200,000 and 400,000 people have been killed. Uh, at least 2 million people are refugees. Even if the killing by the judge to read would stop tomorrow, it's highly likely that we're going to have hundreds of thousands of people killed who are refugees because their homes have been destroyed, their means of livelihood have been destroyed, and uh, it's very interesting that the targets recently have been NGOs and various relief organizations because it's clear that the perpetrators of this genocide, and it is nice to know that our president is using the word genocide, and that Colin Powell was the first to use the word genocide, that um, we somehow need to um, take as our prime moral responsibility that these refugees have to be dealt with in some way, or we're going to have a genocide that is going to be larger than the Rwanda genocide, actually. Yes, uh, you spoke of the uh, Solace Ministries, and do I uh, correctly see that as uh, an avenue where the lay person can get involved, uh, maybe with financial contributions or international trade? Uh, I I'd like to know your information on that, if you will. Um, there is a, uh, a non-profit, uh, New Vision Partners, which just happens to be run by my wife, Laura Miller. Uh, and any donations given to that non-profit will go 100% to whatever organization in Rwanda you designate, and certainly um, Solace Ministries is one possibility. Now the ray of hope is the black church and it's just one of, of, of many segments of the faith system here today. But really going into high on bridging with Africa, West Angeles Church of God and Christ has a fantastic African aid uh, ministry. The other thing I think that we can do as citizens here in the United States is to encourage our government to forgive the debt load that um, burdens African countries so significantly and other developing countries that even though we raise the amount of aid that we give them, we rarely decrease the debt load that they owe One us. One of the things that I'd like to know is what can I do? What can I do? As, and I, I know that uh, William spoke about the, the program and how but how, what, can, what can an individual do? What, kind of, what website can we go to? You talked about the, um, you know, owning the HEPA program. What, what can we do as an individual? And then I think that once we actually do something, we become connected to, to, to um, these, these yes, issues. Uh, the two church world service www.churchworldservice.org or you can go www.unesco, U-N-E-S-C-O dot org, and they'll point you to point you to point you. Would you allow us a word of prayer before we dismiss? Dear Lord, thank you from our various belief systems that we can come together on mercy, on helping. Please keep us dreaming big and realizing that the best way to make our dreams come true is to wake up. Amen.